It's the relationship you create, not the relationship I created with the stone or the relationship that you read from crystal book authors. It's the relationship you create with that stone and no one can tell you what type of relationship you're going to create with it. It's you and the crystal that's going to create it and it's magnificent. Welcome to today's episode. I am so excited you are here. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that's crystals. I absolutely love crystals. I love working with crystals. Crystals have little light beings inside of them that can support us in evolving, can support us in healing our body, mind, and soul. And this is a topic that I love talking about. I infuse crystalline energy in my healings and even the way I teach. I teach people how to open up their Akashic records using crystalline energy. I have been working with, or not necessarily working with, I didn't like consciously know I was working with crystals when I was a kid, but I've been around crystals since I was a kid. My mom's corrected crystals since she was a kid. My grandma collects crystals. Like we are a crystal family, like love, 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 love crystals. And they are so magnificent in so many different ways. So I'm going to highlight some of my crystals that I'm being guided to highlight today and how they can support you in healing. Before we jump into a lot of the content today, I do want to say this. This is not to substitute any or act as any sort of medical advice. Talk to your doctor, obviously. Um, working with crystals is a very personal journey. And the more that you work with your crystals, the more that you are going to connect with them and understand how to work with them. One of the most powerful ways to get to know your crystals is to actually spend time with them. So just holding them or putting them in your pocket is going to be a great way for you to start coming into frequency and in resonance with. And the crystals want to help us. They don't have legs, they can't walk around. And so the more that we connect with them and invite them to support us, the more that they can do their jobs as well. You can think of crystals as having little elemental beings inside of them that are of light, that want to support us and want to support repelling and attracting. So maybe you're wanting to have some protection. It's going to help repel maybe resentment or anger or jealousy. Good example of a crystal for protection is amethyst. Amethyst acts as a psychic vacuum. It is also Typically, one of the first stones that most people are attracted to, it's beautiful, it's shiny, it's magnificent. I love amethyst. Um, not every single piece of amethyst is the same. You might be attracted to amethyst to open up your spiritual gifts, while another piece of amethyst, you might want to work with it to calm your nervous system. You might just be attracted to the particular color or shade that amethyst has to support you with or is being offered in that particular one that you're attracted to. And so amethyst is a magnificent stone that is a spiritual enhancement, spiritual development stone, but also a protection stone. And I love it for that reason. Another crystal that I absolutely love that I think should be in everyone's toolbox is smoky quartz. Smoky quartz acts as an anchor. 
And we want to anchor into Mother Earth. We want to have that support, that nourishment, that grounding, that rooting energy, while also having the expansion energy as well. It is also a nice, beautiful protection stone. For me, And it's not that I'm worried about not having protection. I love when people work with stones for protection, especially if they have nervous energy or they feel like they're being psychically attacked or they just are empaths or very sensitive and they feel like they can tune into everybody's energy or everybody has the tendency to dump all over them. Having protection stones is a fantastic way to support you and in getting into your own energy, support you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Crystals have the ability to also balance the seven major chakras and other chakras in our bodies as well, in our body, mind, and soul. And I love this because let's say you're feeling ungrounded, having a grounding stone and having it work on the lower chakras is going to be really helpful. Another crystal that's going to help work with the lower chakras and is a fantastic manifesting stone is carnelian. And carnelian works on the lower chakras, so it's going to work on creativity. It's going to boost inspiration. It's going to inspire you to take action. It also protects against rage and resentment. How can you be creative if you're in rage or you're angry or you're in resentment? And so it works with the emotional body and the mental body as well. And for me, I love the color of carnelian because it's so, it can be so rich in different oranges. It can be like a really deep red orange. It can be even a really light, almost peach. And the colors will change depending how the stone is found in the earth and how it's cut. And that also changes your connection to the stone. If you are gravitating towards hearts, get hearts. If you're gravitating towards towers, get towers. If you're gravitating towards something raw that's been unpolished, that's beautiful. No one's here to tell you that one particular shape or one particular crystal is better than the other because it doesn't matter. What matters is what you're attracted to and what you're working on in that particular moment in time and how it's going to support you in your healing journey. All the crystals have different special abilities. Um, one of the crystals that I absolutely adore and love is rose quartz. Rose quartz connects you with unconditional love. And so if you are a type of person that has a hard time loving yourself and has a tendency to protect your heart, this is going to be a fantastic stone to find unconditional love, love from divinity, love from spirit. And if you have a hard time loving yourself, you can allow spirit to love you in a different way. It'll help also peel back the layers, the shields that we hold are it placed in front of our heart because we've been hurt in the past, knowingly or unknowingly. This particular crystal that I'm holding in my hand, and you might be listening to this and not watching it, it's a very small uh, rose quartz tower. It's light pink. This crystal my mom gave me when I was a teenager when my parents got a divorce. And she said to me, whenever you don't feel loved or you forget that you're loved, that this crystal is a reminder of that. And I love this. And I'm paraphrasing what she said because it was so long ago. But I remember the feeling and the importance of what she said to me and how important this particular crystal was to supporting me and remembering that I was loved. And at that moment in time, my mom was going through a really hard time. And so I know that this was really special and meaningful to her to give me this crystal. And it's still very special and meaningful to me that I still have it because sometimes we end up losing crystals and it's not because we we're forgetful because sometimes that, that does happen, but sometimes we lose it because our work with that particular crystal is 
complete. I remember losing some really magnificent crystals along my journey that I'm still sad to this day, but not sad in a way that it's holding me back. But it's sad that we lose crystals and it's okay if you lose them. It's okay if you break them. Anytime we break something, we're breaking in habit. And so know that um, if you lose something, it's okay. It's just not meant to be yours anymore. And that's okay too. And we got to make peace with that. And Um, If you're looking for something that's going to support you with unconditional love, Rose Quartz is your crystal, my friend. Uh, Please note that the crystals that I'm sharing with you today do much more than what I'm highlighting. I'm just doing a quick highlight on them because I want to share as many as possible. And I actually have three heart stones here. And the reason why I have three heart stones is I believe that if we connect into the heart. The heart is the bridge between our inner and outer worlds that we can really heal our inner world because our inner world impacts our outer world and our outer world is what we are navigating through our reality. And so getting into our heart is super crucial for our soul's evolution. Next crystal I want to talk about is kunzite. And kunzite is another love crystal. It's another water element crystal. It also helps heal illusions of love. And it heals illusions of love that you have for yourself and for others. It is also a stone that is going to break down the barriers, break down the protection mechanisms, and but also create a level of protection around the heart that is soft and that is um, expansive in such a beautiful way. I love kunzite when I am wanting to feel extra love towards myself, where I find that rose quartz is a great stone for unconditional love, but I feel that that particular stone helps me feel love from divinity, where kunzite helps me feel my own love for myself. And this is a relationship that I've created with these particular crystals. You might have a completely different experience working with crystals. And so know that when I'm talking about what I'm experiencing does not mean it's a hard, fast rule and does not mean you're meant to have that experience. If you end up having a completely different experience, let's say you work with kunzite and kunzite gets you excited and you find that it's actually in a magnificent manifesting stone. That's beautiful because remember, it's the relationship you create, not the relationship I created with the stone or the relationship that you read from crystal book authors, it's the relationship you create with that stone. And no one can tell you what type of relationship you're going to create with it. It's you and the crystal that's going to create it. And it's magnificent. Another crystal that I absolutely love is another heart stone. And this is lapidolite. And lapidolite can come in lavender, it can come in really deep, dark purple, it can have white in it. Um, This particular crystal, when I was pregnant, this was the crystal, like this was the crystal of the year for two years in a row for me. It was one of the most calming, soothing stones ever. It helps calm anxiety. It's like, If you are anxious, you're worried, you're stressed, and you want to be bathed in love, like calming, peaceful, easeful, graceful energy, lapidolite is it. And when I, because I had a really hard pregnancy and I had a near-death life experience with my pregnancy, this was the stone that I would lay with on my chest every single day. And it would just keep my stress level down. And I absolutely love, love, love it. It's one of my, I would put this in my, one of my top 10 favorite stones. Uh, Another crystal that I'm going to talk about is a communication stone. And this is sodalite. I actually was gifted this particular stone um, from one of my 
uh, Reiki teachers a really long time ago. I absolutely love this stone. And it's a stone to support in aiding communication. It opens up the third eye, so it's gonna open up your psychic gifts. This is an excellent stone for working through old emotions that are preventing you from seeing and seeing clearly and speaking your truth clearly. I love sodalite because it's a more of an air element stone. So it's going to really connect you with spirit as well. So I love it, love it, love it. And then the last stone I want to talk about, and it's a mighty stone. And I love this particular stone for physical pain. And that is blue kyanite. Kyanite comes in all different colors. You could get green, you can get black, you can get orange, uh, blue kyanite. I love kyanite. First off, kyanite is a bridge. It bridges the spirit world and your human consciousness. Fantastic stone for opening up your intuition, opening up your higher chakras. This actually works on all of the chakras itself, but this particular stone, and again, this is not to replace medical advice, but I love this stone because anytime I'm feeling something extremely physical, I can hold this baby and it will help me process the physical pain and help ease the pain. I was hosting a retreat uh, two years ago and one of the participants came up to me and you can tell that this participant was in a lot of pain. Their shoulder was hurting really bad. And I go, I got the crystal for you. Second, they touched the crystal. This participant touched the crystal. It, it was like, what is happening? This is insane. Like, it's so awesome. And um, it like, the participant could feel the pain just kind of like melting away from their body. And so I love blue kyanite for that particular reason. And you can get it in all different forms. You can get it flaky, you can get it polished uh, in the raw forms. Like it's such an amazing stone. I have a crystal course. If you're interested in learning more about crystals, uh, you can check out my website, theimmyrobison.com and click on courses. It's called Sacred Crystal Awakening. Um, check it out. We usually have a sale going on, on on the course. We run different sales all throughout the year, but if that's something you're interested in learning more about in terms of going deeper with crystals, because we're just scratching the surface, guys. Like Crystals are such a magnificent thing to play with and to connect with. They want to support us. They want to, again, attract and repel things. They are constantly at work for us. And the more that we play with them, the more that they're going to heal our body, mind, and soul. They can work with us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. They can assist the ego in evolving. They can also assist in healing trauma and inner child wounds as well. They can support in bringing optimism and childlike wonder. Crystalline energies are been used and have supported us for many, 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 many eons. And they wanna to continue to support us because we're also supporting them as well with their purpose and their gifts too. So if you're attracted to a crystal, purchase it if it makes sense for your budget. If you have been being guided to work with crystals, start working with them. You can simply just hold them or meditate with them. But the most important thing is follow the energy of where the crystals take you or where your guidance or your spirit guides is taking you because it's going to lead you down so many beautiful awakening evolution paths. So, all right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe and share this with a friend. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.